Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Manson Saga discussion panel. I'm Paul. That over there is Danny After Dark. Like and subscribe. And down there is Mr. Sub Zero Combat Beckham. And we're and he's ready because if fucking Texas is gonna get it, it's gonna be like minus one degree Celsius. He's gonna be there's gonna be bodies in the streets. <laughs> Next it's week's gonna be, gonna be, dude. Next week's gonna be like when we wake up in the morning next week. I think on Thursday, it's gonna yeah. the wind chill is gonna be like at zero. Like it's gonna be like it's gonna not necessarily be that cold, but it's gonna feel like zero degrees, mm-hmm. and that's insane going to work and it's that cold, dude. Like I wonder. I I bet it's a real dry cold there because you're because uh, you're in because you're in Texas. So that what that means is. Like you wouldn't survive a day here, dude. Canada oh, or in Boston, get, dude. Canada's the wet cold, to be super cold, Oof. like twenty, negative twenty or something. Depends like, on where. you Oh, are and then at. I'm going. So then, like you know, I guess actually, you know what? It's okay because it'll feel like Christmas. The last few years of Christmas, it's been like warm, like seventy degrees. That's except great. when we had that super freeze, and that super freeze was in February, not you know, not around. Christmas. Oh, right. Yeah, we may have a white Christmas here. It just snowed today again. Crazy. Um, not too much. But anyway, um, thank you all for coming. We're we're going to continue with this little streak of shows we've got going on where we just go through our list of things that we, we know where they came from and things that we want to talk about. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll keep going along with that. Um, Danny has some announcements and we, uh, and we'll say hello to everybody. Then we'll move, move right along. Anyway, Danny, would you like to say hello to our guests? Not particularly. No, just kidding. <laughs> hello, everybody. Welcome. Happy Sunday. It's one for those of the, you that practice. It's one week before Christmas. And oh, happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Yep. Joy they. Oh, Paul. All right. So hello, Eric, James, Sam Smith, Mr. Jinx, Ariel, Charlie16, Kat, uh, Andy, hello, Capone, uh, let's see, Linda, Russell, Nick Norris, Wolf, Michelle, Otis, McCat, Hazelnut, fellow Massachusetts person, what's up? Let's see. I don't know how. To, I'm going to butcher this. So I'm just going to highlight. I don't know how to pronounce that. Diet wow. Thing? Yeah. How How do you pronounce that? Daithy? I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, That's no idea, an amazing. I love that name. <laughs> I love that, though. That looks awesome. 3 a.m. in your way. What a champ. Wow. Where is it? Where, where you are? Where it's 3 a.m. Let's. Let's see who else have I missed? Big phone. Oh shit! I clicked Clifford. something. Okay. Um. K Dog. Hello, Clifford Crawford. Hello, Mark. Okay, we got we got an answer. That's sick Irish. Yes. Dahi. 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 Well, welcome, Paul. Give him a wrench. Yeah, I will. Just fucking right. I will. And if I butcher your name at any point again, like, just please correct me. Dahi, welcome. How'd you find out about us? <laughs> yeah, I'm always so curious. Anybody I'm who, hoping he who says comes through in. Danny After Dark. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, yeah, let us know how you found out about us. I liked the one that was like, I liked the one that was, um, somebody was like, are you the guy that they talk shit about all the time? <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Nick, no, yeah. it was not badass. No, Nick, I don't know what you were watching. We weren't watching the same thing. Oh, through Nick Shrek. Nice. That is a beautiful segue. That is a beautiful segue. So, special announcement. So, I was beyond fortunate and had the opportunity to interview Nicholas Shrek for my channel for Danny After Dark. And it will be on his relationship on when he was friends with Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker. So that will be premiering this Thursday. 
Um, I will set up the time. So it will be um, a live premiere, but it was pre-filmed. It was so good. Nick was, I mean, Nick's amazing friend of the show here. We love Nick Shrek, but he gave some great information. So even if you're familiar with the Richard Ramirez case, you're going to get some good inside information. You can't just go get in any other book. So definitely check it out. It's, I'm so happy about it. It was my first solo interview, so I was nervous as hell, but Nick's amazing. So yeah. And I've seen, I've seen a bunch of it and she did great it was and it, i just like i was so proud of her <laughs> i was like because i was watching it and i was remembering the first sitting down with um well with nick for the first time was fucking stressful but just in general doing like the thing with uh with neil sanders because that was the first thing i'd ever done and then he was and then he was late and I was like, oh and then my you God, had to everything. pee. <laughs> and then, oh fuck! But it was so long. No, I was sitting there, and I was like, oh my God, it's all falling apart already. That's it. That's it. It's over. And um, but then, yeah, and now we're here, and we've had to. And so when I watched that, long story long, I was just like, that's awesome, because you because you handled it like a champ. You did great. So yeah, look forward to that, people on. Thursday, you said, this right? Thursday, yeah. And you're going to do a live, are you going to do a live? Live yeah, premiere, gonna, so I'll be in the live chat. Live premiere. Yeah. Awesome. So what we'll hey, do Corey, is we'll... Oh, messy. Yeah, right. The World Cup happened. That's right. Oh, man. That's, it's another, another sports that my brothers and my sister were into it because they're in England. And they were super into everything. And I was just like, still haven't, <laughs> still didn't got into it. Um, let's see here. I I'm here. We're just learning had a phone through the call. chat oh, that good. Beckham had to leave because he had a phone call. He didn't tell us that. He just wrote it in the that's chat. That's good. That's great. Good. Good enough. We're only your co-hosts. I mean, what, what should we know, you know? <laughs> um, all right. So we can get started anyway. We what we'll do, we have another announcement. Shit, we have another announcement. Go ahead. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let me take this one. Yeah, do it. So yours truly, Danny After Dark, as well as these two guys, we will be going to L.A. We officially are going to be going to L.A. The plan is in motion. It is in the works. We've talked about it for so long. So... We're super excited. We're going to hit all the places that we've talked about that we want to go to and not just do that, but film some really awesome content for this show and a give ton. you guys a good behind the scenes. We may or may not do the trails and then see how far back and falls that we're not sure about. Right. And we may or we'll may see. not get footage of Paul getting arrested at Horn yeah. but we will see. With yeah, that being that's... said, um, we wanted to do in regards to, especially for me, Paul coming from Canada and with the holidays and all that, we're like, shit, this costs a pretty penny. So what we're going to do is we have set up to do some raffles and we have two really cool raffle prizes mm -hmm. and we're going to do a separate video and announce what those raffle items are and um, how to enter and the rules and everything. So it'll be a quick video that will be premiering soon on how to do that. Uh, we know the holidays are coming up, so we're going to make this go past the holidays. Um, you'll Again, you'll get more information in the video, but keep that in mind on your holiday shopping. If you're like, you know what, I want to treat myself to something pop from the podcast, I may win in a raffle. Think of us. Yes, we're raffling my beard hair. Shit, how did you know that there was a leak? There was a leak. Um, no, but it's going to be unreal. I have some really cool ideas for videos we're going to do there. We're going to go regardless. Um, but we're also wanting to, because if, like, if by the odd chance, any of you guys want to actually meet us in person, we will, we will be going to Spawn Ranch and doing a little, uh, a walk down there, some filming, and we'll give you more information when the when the time comes um yeah we're just we're we're going early february and it's going to be it's going to be badass i've got yeah such cool ideas 
such cool ideas, but it's going to be busy. We're going to be working our asses off for the mm -hmm. days that we're there. So like Danny said, it would help a lot if, uh, if you wanted to, this raffle is going to be pretty awesome for, for people into this case. And if you want to, if you want to enter, that'll be good. That will help and go straight to the trip and anything that is above and beyond will go to the show. And yeah. And if you just want to, uh, if you just want to put money forward, like if you just want to donate to the show, you can do that as well. So thank you very much ahead of time. It's going to be wild. And uh, if you'll have heard, and yeah, we'll head over. Yeah, we'll check out the Spawn Ranch Belladonna together. We'll see what happens, right? We'll see if we can find the old Gerber jar. Fucking yeah, because there's so many of you guys that live in the California area. And, you know, you mentioned like, hey, when you come out, when you come out and we're coming out. So, yeah, anybody that lives nearby, it would be, yeah, cool to do like a big group thing at the ranch. And me and Beckham yeah. went together last May, was it, or April when me and you went? But No, dude, it was, May of it was May of 2021, dude. It's almost going to be oh two years God. since I've actually seen you in person. That's wow. insane. Yeah, that's the best weekend of your life. Get to spending time with me. <laughs> um, but Paul, Paul's gonna pop his spawn ranch cherry, and yeah. we all have to see it. <laughs> I'm gonna be so scared of snakes. I'm gonna be like legit, not like fucking. I'm gonna hear. <laughs> I'm gonna be like fuck this, you guys. You know, I like really enjoyed my time with y'all, but I'll see you later. You'll never see a, like a dude with such skinny calves run so fast. That'll never. You'll never see anything like it. Thanks very much, Wolf. It's going to be fucking awesome. And I can't wait to share it with you guys, especially if everything works out the way I want it to. Because mm -hmm. there's just such a cool... And, yeah, and the, you know, the ranch, the ranch get-together would be so sick. If they weren't so terrible... Uh, if they weren't so terrible with flight stuff, like with, with, um, with gear, I'd bring my guitar... So I could play at the ranch. That, that would be actually they, pretty cool, man. If you could play the guitar while you were there. They smash everything. If anybody has a guitar and wants to come to the ranch, an acoustic guitar, I'll play it. Well, let's take a step back because Hazelnut, a little while ago, a couple minutes ago, had a what looks like a really great idea for some raffle items. And I think these could be the big ticket players. My guitar, fuck that. <laughs> God, be awful. I love my guitars. Is the picture fuzzy tonight, or is it just me? It might just be your connection. Mine's dude. It's cold everywhere. Tonight. Like it's got, it's starting to get like super cold everywhere. So those connections are going to start dropping a little bit. All right. Okay. So before we go any further on our on our craziness, let's uh, let's get into tonight's show. Um, so. Danny, I think you started last last time, right? So I wouldn't be a gentleman if I didn't say, uh, sit back and let me take the first part of this one. Um, no. Typical guy. <laughs> Typical guy. <laughs> it, was so, it was so good. I had to. Um, I would please. get on that. Like, I would buy so many uh. raffle tickets to win that. That's crazy. No way. You know what would be so funny? If one of the raffled items was you have to like, I, um, I have to listen to a full Fleetwood Mac album from oh, Fleetwood that in would front of you guys. Hilarious. And, I, and I can't bitch. And on, and on camera, dude. Live. You gotta sit here and, and listen to And I have to, to it. do it on camera. That would be, no, that would, the bidding would start at $500. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know what? That's so worth it. Oh my God. Anyway, so anyway, so these, these, even though these shows jump around a little bit, um, they're really informative. So I'm, I'm stoked on these ones. We, uh, we had some stuff to chat about at the start, but we'll, uh, yeah, we'll move along. So I'm going to start with post murders because 
it's just one of the craziest things I think is Rudy Altobelli um, suing the suing the families for getting blood on his on his floor, right? And that, and not only that, then keeping the couch, keeping the bloody couch, and into the 80s, just having dude. it as like a into the eighties. As like a showpiece. Yep. It's incredible. Fucking incredible. He and there's a picture. He also the Sharon Tate estate. He also should. Yeah, yeah. Her estate. He made them clean up. Even them for damages. How dare she bleed on the floor. I know. It, it brought down the, he said it brought down the value of the property. Because mm. it was such a high profile thing. See that part of it, like cold blooded as it is. I get that part of it where he says, like, there was a high profile murder here. It brings down the value of my, but damn, like the rest, the rest of that. And then he keeps the stuff. He's like, hey, that's like reminds me of that part in uh, in Boys in the Hood where the little kid's like, hey, man, y'all want to see a dead body? It's oh, <laughs> just like Rudy uh, Altavelli. Was, was that that one or was that um, another movie? Was that, or- that was Boys in the Hood. Wasn't I don't it? think so. I think it was um no, it was an 80s movie. Or Menace with... to Society? No, no, no. It's it wasn't one of those rap... two. It, no, it wasn't a rap movie. <laughs> it was you mean Stand uh, By Me? Stand By Me. There you go. Was yes. It Stand By Me? Yeah, oh. there it is. No, I minus love Fleetwood Mac. Stand by me, damn it. Everyone's here. Stand by me, fucking idiot. That's true. I am. But <laughs> thank you. The thing is. Dude, so I could I'll... I could literally wolf. I could literally fly somebody somewhere and meet me for a date. <laughs> um, me and Paul talked about raffling you off. We you did. We were like, let's <laughs> raffle off a date with Beckham. <laughs> um, so, anyway, can we just jump so, back to Rudy Altabelli, Paul. So yeah, yeah. He, it's not like he's just your average everyday you know, middle-class working family, you know, has a piece of property trying, you know, trying to get, you know, earn income that way. This is somebody who is wealthy and has a lot Mm -hmm. of money who could, who could take the hit if his big concern was the value of the home is going to go down. And I know this was like, you know, different than nowadays where there's so many properties from so many serial killers, but like, I look at it like that's going to increase the value in a sick way, but you know. I don't think not in the no, because then that's such a niche market, and and it's yeah, I don't know about that, but I disagree. I know that's crazy. Well, you're out of your mind. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, um, you're out of your mind. Out of your dang fool mind. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is because we're talking about this, and part of what we're doing is telling where we get this information from. So screaming from the rooftops, hey. Like there's, you know, there's a bloody couch. People are like, what? It's like. Exactly. Thank you. There it home. is. That's the uh, bloody She's couch. She's a nice lady. If you look, that's as hot, close as I can go. Look at that. Do you see the discoloring? Oh, yeah. Uh, dude, is that the blood stain on the bottom? That's the mm-hmm. blood stain. Wow. Yeah, that's the couch that they kept. That's uh, Bob. Dude, I don't Esty. even know what's. That's like the ultimate worst thing ever. And I he, could uh, not sit there. What about would... karma and shit like that, dude? Oh, it's brutal. It'll be brutal. Yeah. So Bob Esty is is actually one of the guys who uh, was a big part of breaking stuff to uh, Nicholas Shrek for the Manson file, and he's he's mentioned in there as a source. And this uh, this picture just wow. is crazy. Dude, I would and not it just shows. Just for like karma and all that, I don't mess around with that kind of stuff, dude. I would not have even looked at the that, couch. No, that's bad. Karma. Not... Especially after doing that, too. I know. Right? Like, well, well, maybe you didn't know. Maybe you didn't know unless they boasted about it. You know, maybe you come over and you're meeting people in L.A., and they're like, yeah, there's a party up at, up there in the in the in the hills or whatever, and you're going or the canyon, and you don't know unless they bragging about it, right? I mean, you might not know unless they were bragging about it, which I think they did brag about it. I'm sure. Cougar, 
Beckham's a cougar. <laughs> how old? You, how old do you think Beckham is? I'm Just, 33. Oh fuck! Shut off. the fuck off, <laughs> dude. I swear to God, I was asked my age the other day by somebody at work, and they literally thought I was like 28. Hey, Capella. Mm. Hey, Capella. We haven't we haven't got that far yet. So what we're yeah. So this first bit that we're doing is Rudy Altabelli. He uh, he's like, hey, I'm going to sue everybody. And my property value has gone down and blah, blah, blah. But I'm keeping the couch. <laughs> but I'm fucking keeping the couch. It's disgusting. And so where they have all these like squeaky <laughs> clean people, they're saying, are, are uh, really like really hurting after all this stuff happened. Meanwhile, this macabre shit is going on. And so that couch stayed there, right? It didn't go anywhere. So you know who else lived in Cielo Drive after the murders? Chris with Rudy Johnson. Altabelli? No, Terry Melcher. Terry mm -hmm. Melcher sat on that fucking couch and yeah, was but... apparently seen wearing uh, Wojtek Frakowski's old clothes. Yeah, that's true. And that's in Chaos. That was from Chaos. And man... That's so dude. Just, well, so Chris morbid. Johnson, man. The only reason I know I know his name is Chris Johnson because that's a, a football player, one of the fastest NFL football players in history, right? So his name was Chris Johnson. So it, okay. it kind of clicks with me because I'm you know a sports person. So yeah, yeah, Chris Johnson was the actor friend of of Rudy that supposedly might have had an affair with Sharon while in that in those months, oh, okay, right. prior to Sharon coming back. And right. they had some intimacy, whatever. I don't know what happened. Was that the pushy guy? Did he end up having like? Is so this he the comes, guy that? Yeah. yeah so he okay. moves in Go after ahead. the murders, right? In the in the pool house because the kid was gone. He's all whacked mm -hmm. out. Garrettson's all whacked out. He moves out or whatever. He moves in, and the couch and all that stuff is still there, and it freaked him out. Like it literally freaked Chris John, uh, Christopher Johnson, Chris, whatever you want to call him, Chris Johnson out. That he mm -hmm. only could live there a little bit. Like he didn't live there long, dude, because it was freaking him out, right? Like any like it would anybody. Because he had sure. a relationship with her, even if it was sexual, non-sexual, but I'm sure they might have anything. Uh, anybody yeah, they who shared knew. some intimacies as far as like, you know, what they're what, you know, some secrets or whatever. I mean, who knows? But yeah, he got right. to know her really well, no matter what. And just a few months before the murders and then when the murders happen of course it's all crazy pan you know paranoia stuff going on with the murders and how crazy the murders were and all the rumors of the murders right how gruesome they were no one really knew how the reality of how gruesome it was so when he saw the couch and all that kind of stuff it just freaked him out and he and he had to uh he had to get out you know it right. depressed him and stuff so he had to leave which I don't blame him, dude. I, I think anybody would be freaked out about, about it. Chris Jones, not Johnson. Oh, Jones. I'm sorry. Jones. Christopher Jones. Sorry. Yeah, Jones. Chris Jones. He was, too, it was Johnson. It took, Beckham was too busy thinking about his Johnson after Andy making those comments, how she'd go on a date with him. It's okay. It's okay. We move Shut on. Up. I wonder if he was sitting on that couch for nostalgic purposes. Like, fuck. That, that just sticks in my head. Mike Jones, who? Mike Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Do that again. No, Mike no. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'll screen grab um, that. It's okay. No, um, the, uh, sorry. Clifford Go mentions ahead, Danny. the front door as well. He did. He mm. did. And he painted over it. it like, is this weirdest thing. Like, if you're going to have something like that, it's still there under the paint. That bad fucking karma is still there under the paint, just waiting for you. Oh. Um, so let's see here. Yeah, Melcher and somebody puts like, oh, the Tom O'Neill thing. We'll we'll go into that um another time. I have to read that again. It took me a minute kind of to uh to figure out what he was talking about like and it's i don't know it's it's the cia it's all worded weird anyway 
we'll talk about that once we've had more of a chance to look at it. Um, let's see here. So anything else on, on that part of it? There's, no. there's more detail, but like, like all these shows, we're just kind of going over reasons well, why this, like, I wish we had holes that picture. In the character. I wish we had that picture of the, of the couch with the drip. It's black and white, but you can still see the blood drip on the bottom. Right. And that's the one is that, that right yeah, there. That's on that side of the couch, right? It's on the right side of the couch. If you're sitting, you know, if you're sitting yeah. on it and be to the right, correct. So. Which, which makes me wonder who was sitting there bleeding out, you know? Right. Somebody had to sit there long enough for the blood to drip all the way down. Yep. The, Not like the ladder. Right. right. And, and bleed into the thing because that's mm -hmm. a lot of blood in there. Right. Yeah. Um, the wrench, it doesn't mean anything necessarily. It's more so because this sometimes works like a... Uh, a think tank we all kind of you can throw a um you can throw a link in and people can can click on it and be able to actually go otherwise if you put it in it's just nobody can do anything with it yeah oh gross quite <laughs> a lot a lot <laughs> dark um this yellow door was later acquired by a self-proclaimed collector of oddities from new orleans named christopher moore to be installed on his house holy shit wouldn't it have been fry core gibby that's what i think i think they would have been because and that goes okay man like that goes along with what Beckham's talking about, how they were tortured for a bit or kept. I mean, that's possible. alive I'm, for a I'm bit. I'm just saying, like, yeah, what's well, not? I don't know if it's torture. That's not I mean, a fucking nosebleed. Oh, that's I know, not, but I mean, I don't want to get sound crazy and say they were tortured and they were sitting there for an hour or two and all. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. But it, what it does explain is that they sat there long enough to it or to, somebody to, bleed, to soak yeah. in the couch so much that it dripped literally. Went through yeah. the couch onto the cushion and down the the front portion of the you know the, the couch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Unless I mean that's a while. It's not couch. like two minutes sitting there. You know what I mean? Like they just weren't they weren't sitting there two minutes. Right. Yeah. But I don't want to sound crazy and be like, well, they were sitting there tortured for an hour because we don't know. Right. <laughs> right. Um. I don't know. Ask Charlie. I'm just looking. He's probably seeing yeah, more. Charlie says, what was the couch made of? The drip patterns are not Thor's. Those I don't know, of man. an arterial hemorrhage. Um, yeah, you're getting into the blood stuff. I don't, you know, I don't. There's some, well, stay tuned because there will be, there will be more on that soon. Um, what do you mean by that? You'll, you'll, you'll find out. <laughs> You'll find so out. Stay tuned. Make sure you're liked and subscribed to Falcon. Um, there's there's some spots like you can see on. I'm not sure if you can see it actually on the picture that I have up here, but there's a few pictures of the front steps where you can see some arterial spray. Um, hmm. Let me just take a quick look. I'll put it up and see if you can. If you can the I black don't and think white it's one? this one. Oh, no, okay. this one. No, it wasn't this. There's another one. There's another couple, actually. That's a gore. I should have said, like, warning. <laughs> Fuck it. Um, Charlie well, wants point, Charlie. Says, one would have to look at the autopsy report to see if there are minor injuries consistent with torture. Uh, yeah. Right. There's only the, the cheeks, but it doesn't say anything about post-mortem hmm. or anything like that. Because right. it was a shitty job. Yeah. Um, Clifford, interesting. Ooh, well, the bushes wasn't. How does he know that? <laughs> That's yeah. He's seen a few. Uh oh. Um, okay, so 
Yeah, before we go down that, because that is a fucking whole rabbit hole in and of Excuse itself. Me. What the blood Getting on the couch? The blood stuff. Yeah. It, well, the blood on the everything. The oh, blood yeah. on the fucking everywhere. The different, yeah. all that stuff. Dude, it's hard. Before we man. go. Yeah, Danielle, would you like to uh, take our next, our next thing here? Yes. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about. It comes from chaos and it is so after the murders occur, Robin Polanski comes back again. He was overseas. Um, so when he comes back, he was taken to Paramount. And um, if for those of you who have chaos, um, it kind of starts on page 57, 58. But basically, um, he was brought to Paramount. And then it says, when the LAPD arrived at the studio that evening, they were barred from entering Polanski's suite, suite until he finished the debriefing. Oliosi didn't find that worth mentioning. He only wrote that, quote, Polanski was taken to an apartment inside the Paramount lot where he remained in seclusion under a doctor's care. The police talked to him briefly that night, but he was at that time unable to suggest to anyone with a motive for the murders, end quote. I just found that fascinating because, you know, his wife's dead. She was murdered brutally and he's taken somewhere to deep brief before the police can even get to him. It's that blows my mind. So yeah. I wanted to point that out because that's not necessarily well known. I didn't know that before I read chaos personally. So do you guys right. have anything to comment on that? Not, not me. It's well, I mean, I've we've me. talked about it as far as you know, we have yeah, talked about was, it before. Yeah, he's deep, he's been he was debriefed before any before detectives could even could even before. Well, Polanski lands, it was damage right? control. Yeah, the the you know, Paramount and, and the team got a hold of him, de, you know, debriefed him at the uh, at, at the studio, right? He'd never even made it to Cielo Drive that when he landed, they took him right straight to the studio, hit him, protected him, whatever you want to call it. And the lawyers for Paramount told him what was going to happen. He was even able to take some like a downer or I don't know what something right to kind of calm him down. He was he was on dope the whole flight, and uh, stuff, right? Apparently. Yeah, and like because he um, wouldn't have been able to make. Um, he traveled with. Um, oh, what's Warren, that actor? I can see his Warren, Warren Beatty. Beatty. Warren Beatty. Yeah. yeah. So the fact that the the detectives didn't even get to talk to him before he once he landed, which they should have grabbed him at the airport. Is still mm -hmm. mind blowing to me. So, yep. You know, that's crazy. I would have been pissed mm -hmm. off, dude, if I was a detective and somebody snatched him like that. And then, like, yeah, there was lawyers already there. And I would have been like, what the fuck y'all doing? That, that wouldn't have worked unless you had some real high power stuff going on. And that's one of the things that's really intense is yeah. like, like how they do that under their nose. And that kind of feeds into another thing that off off of our list which i if i hope you don't mind me jumping off quickly because it's a really good transition by all means uh, go ahead paul um i was talking <laughs> yeah i was talking to uh <laughs> um i was talking to nancy from yeah. true crime and moonshine true crime make and sure moonshine like and, it just has a yeah, good little make clip. sure you like and subscribe it has a good little um, ring to it <laughs> It's such a good name. I love I know, that. I like, I like it. So it was good. so smart. Yeah. Um, but so she was talking to me about the Spawn Ranch raid. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's going to be doing a show on that soon. And one of the things that was really interesting that she noticed, she was she said she was watching our show on it, which was which was sick. And she said she noticed the date like that they were watching them from that it's written on there the date that they had been watching them since was the date of the lots of papa shooting mm -hmm. so all the crazy shit that was going on with the lots of papa shooting they right. were being right. watched by the by oh, the Cielo cops, drive right? was being watched or who every the the commune well, well so if they're know, going we, up to well, yeah, Cielo drive and then the police records remember from like a year yeah. before that this is part of the show. Oh, so, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, no. So, no, it's okay. So, so that's that's one of the things that's really interesting 
along with like if you look into the police reports and stuff like that there was informants everywhere and up on cielo drive as well so with that being said if they're watching that for if they're watching the commune and they're going up to cielo drive they're doing all this sort of stuff then they're you know why wouldn't they be watching everything and that shows that a lot of stuff happened under their nose hinman happened under their nose the yep. tate and la bianca murders happened under their nose while they were oh, watching uh, and then they waited for a while and then like because it was yeah it was pretty intense well, then that's what i'm saying who has the phone records to cielo i wish we knew that who yeah. had them was it was there was the house bugged i think i think rudy bugged it but he had a private investigator but you know like who had access to the phone records of the say for say the week right that whole week mm -hmm. you know who 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 had who who ultimately had the records you know what i mean well that's that's uh one of those things where it's like uh between that and like bank records would tell a whole well, of lot course. of stuff yeah you give me the bank records and i'd figure a lot of shit out because that's what i do yeah panthers came to the ranch before the hinman murders now do they know that here's the thing for me is do they know they were black panthers or was it just a car full of black guys went up to went up to spawn ranch allegedly and it was in the that was actually in a uh in a police report right like that was in the big spawn ranch they were looking at it that was in the same report that they said um watch out for the weed patches because there's people with machine guns or something oh dude it was crazy man dude they had yeah. the, they had a world phone on on site you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> they could give me the satellite. Yeah, uh, a, a modern the, version of a satellite phone. No, they just they had a. I'm um, just playing. Yeah, they, yeah, I know. No, they had a. Uh, they had what was it called again? Though they had they a had whole communication system, dude. They had a. They had. They legit had a communication system in the ranch. They could communicate with each other from one end to the other. They had watch points. They had sniper uh, perches. You know, they had it all. This place, to me, from when I read it, was secured. Yeah, and they that's a joke, a but it's help. probably true. <laughs> oh, dude, can you imagine if that was true? That if, if his <laughs> private investigator was Reed Whitson, that would field actually phone, put a thank spin you. on. Thank you. The thank field you. phone, yeah, but that would actually put a spin on some things, dude. If that was actually true. Supposedly, a group of black people went horseback riding. They <laughs> that's okay. Is that real? Is that being a, okay? That would that's, be kind of a funny that's joke. Funny. But, that's yeah. hilarious. Um, <laughs> I just want to point something out before we get too far ahead. That yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. How are you doing? Fine, darling. <laughs> How you doing, darling? I can I can get my okay. my Texan accent on. <laughs> yeah, you, you, know, you fucking you keep that to yourself. Would you, you would son you like of to bitch. go out for a, for a steak and potato dinner? <laughs> Yuck! Everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> Angie, I'm so sorry. Oh, uh, sorry. Okay. Um. So, wait, whose turn is it? That was my turn. You just it's went. My turn. Okay. <laughs> I didn't realize you were going tip for tat here. Like and subscribe. Ooh. Hey, that, isn't that the name of a biker bar? What tit for tat? There's the there's the titty twister <laughs> from fucking <laughs> Dusk Till Dawn. <laughs> the titty twister oh, is that the name of it? The titty twister. The that's movie? the name of the vampire the bar. Oh my movie. god! And it's I got like about... big spin. <laughs> <laughs> Where did they get a picture of that, dude? Like like a picture of the of the bar name or whatever. Yeah. That's hilarious. You're so immature. Yeah, fuck yeah. Okay, go ahead, Danny. <laughs> so Danny another Twister. thing to take a look at with this case, um, and this again comes out of Chaos by Tom O'Neill. Um, if anybody was not aware that, I mean, we could do a whole 10 episodes on Bully OC and all the shit he did with this case. Mm -hmm. But I'm sp focusing specifically right now, now on when he had a ghostwriter during the trial. And um, what I have in here is, um, again, from page 109 in chaos, when he says, for one thing, 
Um, okay, said that Boliosi had borrowed what he needed to write Helter Skelter and then conveniently never returned anything. Boliosi had seen earlier than anyone that the Manson trial was going to be his meal ticket, Kay said. He took the ethically dubious step of installing his writing partner, Kurt Gentry, in the courtroom every day to watch the proceedings in real time. Gentry was working on the book that would become Helter Skelter before anyone was even convicted. The sensationalism only inflamed Bliosi's hubris. At one point, he grabbed Kay's arm in the courtroom and said to him, quote, Steve, aren't I great? Do you know anyone as great as me? End quote. That's exactly yeah. the right. So, yeah, again, he, Stephen was already, I mean, oh God, we could go on about him. But, yeah, that's just disgusting. Just disgusting. Already, like, working the trial and working a book. And yeah. People knew. Right. And that's, I mean, I, yeah, I don't know what the, I don't know what the legalities of that is. And one of the things is like, I've had to get my head around is like, there was a lot of shitty people in this and Bugliosi, some of the shitty stuff he did, didn't have anything to do with the trial. And so you got to like separate the two, like him doing that shit with his, uh, with his um, milkman, and then beating the crap out of his uh, late his lady, his mistress, his mistress, and like just just a horrible dude. But it's things like like leaking information to the press and like doing that sort of stuff that's more more dubious. Mm -hmm. Though probably a lot of lawyers doing it. This is just a big fucking trial, right? And he's just so. The fact that he described everything the oh, same man. in every in every book. No, I, I gotta Remind. believe in the no, I gotta what? believe in the goodness of, of on the law side. I mean, well, I mean I gotta, that's I, I, yeah, I think enjoyed he was, right. I just think he he was a, either he had his own narrative like we all talk about, or it was a cover up, a super cover up by. Korshak, the the mafia in the, the studio, and they got and they got him to come in and say, "Hey, do this, and you can write a book and do, and that's your deal. There you go, or whatever." Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. Right. I you just got to believe in you got to believe in in what was established in law enforcement at the time. You have to believe in it, or else there'll just be chaos everywhere if you don't. Well, I mean, and the weather in Never Neverland, I hear, is fucking fantastic. <laughs> I don't, I haven't seen it yet in this. Or in like anything, like so many times. Yeah, like I see. Charlie the, uh, says he was a dirty deer. I mean, he, yeah, he was on his. He either yeah. he was planted or he was dirty but on his own. There was so many dirty, like right everywhere. There's so much stuff going well, on, right? I mean, we'll remember. talk. Like, remember when we had talked about this? Is just and we're side noting here, but yeah, remember we had talked about um, uh, uh what's his name getting killed, um, Rossed mm -hmm. out getting killed and put in the oh, trunk yeah. and yeah. Massaro yeah. having to do with that. And you being like, no fucking way this guy's an informant and, and, they let him. and doing they all let him. this stuff. And they let him. And well, that so was gonna go that's to my where it comes point. into this too. Right. With Manson it, stuff. They just let him do stuff. But then I was going to say, fuck Sharon Tate. What if it was them who called and asked right. if Sharon was home? And I was yeah, just going to jump on that with, from what you were just, I was going to go into that. But uh, what I was going to go was a little bit further as during the trial, um, where the agency that was set up that was supposed to be like the DEA, because the DEA doesn't become official until 1973. So we found documents or information where, remember the that agency before, I forgot what it was called, before DEA, Drug Enforcement mm -hmm. Agency, they employed the CIA to start doing their backgrounds because of all the dirty agents they had. Mm -hmm. Remember we mm -hmm. found, we talked about that in a show previous. So it was, that was already 1970, 1971 or early 1971 so i mean they had to do a lot of callbacks and reassessment of agents and they ultimately gave control to the cia for the you know the the recruiting process right going forward to make yeah. sure that people were in the you know the it was having the, a the right sorry the, i'm sorry right for the job and all the background stuff and everything that goes into that you know right it was having an stuff. outside uh what's it is like having an outside uh uh agency yeah go the over because it's not corrupted yeah, by go. that actual agency yeah. um bureau of, narcotics. Or at least it's bureau of narcotics 
Um, well, it's like on the one hand, like I understand that a job needed to get done. So as a prosecutor, he did what he had to do to get a conviction. So I get that. But the way he went about it, sure, we can still say it was absolutely dirty. Completely yeah, for dirty. Sure. Yeah. And there was and there was just so many. It just felt like everything just lined up perfectly. Mm -hmm. Right. Like for him, he had no, no problem. Even within um, chaos, there's multiple instances that Tom O'Neill cites that in speaking with Stephen K, Stephen was, I didn't know about this or, you know, gave a contradictory statement. Again, he's always going to have the back, in my opinion, of Vincent Bugliosi because the conviction had to happen. But to even mm -hmm. have Stephen K make contradictory statements is very telling. Right. Well, I mean, you just, I mean, you're always going to have dirty cops. I just, I just still stand by, you know, the correct way of doing things. You got to believe in the system. Oh, it's I get tough that. When, it's tough when, yeah, we could go in circles with this all night. Well, I, I still, and I understand what you're making, what you're saying. I get it. I mean, yeah. I totally get it, but you know. Well, the other, the thing though, is that's the problem is if you do, like, I'm sure you do have a bunch of people that are playing by the rules. But if yeah. you have people that aren't, they cancel everybody who's playing by the rules out because you can't win True. against somebody who's willing to step on someone's back to get up to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that was Danny, right? That mm -hmm. was you. All right. So let's see here. Um, so Susan LaBerge, there's not a lot of... Uh, there's not a lot of info out there about Susan LaBerge. And a lot of it is either there's no like real way to find where it came from, or there's, there's a lot of people yelling fabrication on both sides. Now, one thing that it's pretty tough to dispute is a, an audio clip that we were lucky enough to get from, um, Bo from CLOdrive.com of Susan LaBerge, uh, or not of Susan LaBerge, sorry, of a uh, of a cop talking about Susan LaBerge. Mm -hmm. And you'll, you'll see his name was uh, Sergeant Knuckles, which I just love saying his name. It sounds fake. But... Thank you, Bo. Um, yeah, acapella. That's the... Uh, that's one of the big things from from chaos that I liked too is when he was talking with the <clears throat> sheaf of papers in front of him and handwriting undeniably belonging to Bugliosi. <clears throat> K slumped in his chair. I am shocked, he said. I'm just shocked. Um, his voice trailed off. He asked the question I'd so often ask myself. If Vince was covering this stuff up, he said, if he changed this, what else did he change? And that's where that that you can't as soon as something shady happens it pokes holes in everything yeah um so i am going to if you just give me a moment i'm going to get the uh i'm going to get that audio set up so we can listen to it because it's really interesting so some of the some of the um i guess you call it rumors or some of the allegations against Susan LaBerge are um, well one of the things is that she moved into a town she tracked down Patty Tate um, had her her kids like befriend Patty Tate's kids they were over at her house um, and Danielle do you want to finish this story off and I can look for this thing do you know it well enough to go to go off of it so texas camp was made aware and it got back to sharon tate mm -hmm. and not not about, not sharon tate it got back oh to, my god uh, sorry sharon sorry, tate, sorry. Never tate that tex had said um yeah she's her to, ace in the hole she's her ace in the hole he, bruce Dave, he was talking to bruce davis and saying i have one of the victims like i'm paraphrasing but basically said i have one of the victims um kids coming to my defense and she's working on another one 
so I might have two. And that being said, Tom O'Neill said that was a complete fabrication. And um, Alyssa Statman, who wrote, um, fuck, what the fuck is the book name? I am so sorry, you guys. I'm so out of it tonight. Um, Restless Souls, wrote Restless Souls. He said that was, she said she was full of shit. She made that up. That's it's not real. So if that gets taken out of there, then it's like, oh shit. Well, where do you go from there? But you go to you go to this this recording that's just like, you know, it's the way that he talks about it. It's yeah. the way that well, he, you're missing um, the most dramatic part of that story, which is where you know she finds out where uh, Deborah oh, right. finds out. You know, drives to go get Patty. Pat, what the fuck, man? <laughs> do you want me to do this? <laughs> Okay, so yeah, there was the other part where Patty, uh, so if that tech stuff had happened, where tech says that stuff, then Doris Tate finds out, calls Patty Tate and says, she's she's in bed with, with text. Like, and then Patty all of a sudden is like, well, my daughter's there. He's like, go fucking get her. And it's just like, in the book, it's like they were kidnapped, right? Like, or her daughter was kidnapped, but it's, who knows? Yeah. Um, so now I have to find this fucking come on, thing. Danielle. Jesus, oh, Beckham, yeah. shut it. Well, thanks for covering for me. For fuck's sake, no kidding. Come on, Danielle. My um, Beckham, did you jump in, dude? I'm the number three here. I, you know, I come in with yeah, don't it. I'm you not don't the number two, or, it. you know, I'm, I'm the supportive person on the you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. So while Paul pulls that up, just a quick reminder and plug that we will be doing a, me and Paul will be doing a separate video later on announcing our raffle and all the rules and regulations for that. So stay tuned. There's going to be some really cool freaking stuff. And then also for Danny After Dark, my channel, I will be premiering on Thursday. Um, it will be a live premiere. I had Nicholas Shrek on my channel for an interview about um, when he had a relationship with Richard Ramirez and gave some really great inside information. So that's, that's an amazing interview. It was so much fun. So make sure to check that out on Danny After Dark this Thursday. Dude, this is my, yeah, Russell brings up a good point. This is my third show for today. Don't my even little, go oh there. God, <laughs> don't even, Danielle will fucking kill you. <laughs> anyway, okay. So it was not like you had to brush up for this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, so this is Sergeant Knuckles talking about um, Susan LaBerge and the the LaBianca situation. Here you go. Uh, then, uh, you know, I lived in Eagle Rock at the time, and you know, LaBianca was in the town, and I had a church I went to, and we'd have a function, you know, around the holidays or whatever. These people would see me and my wife, and they come up, they say, you know, uh, uh, you know, all of us business about the money and all of us, and uh, uh, that's that's her side of the family, not uh, our side. I said, it'll all come out, you know. Everybody wanted to make sure they didn't they didn't put in the book or investigated, but. The, Money, you know. I said, oh, I said, you're going to be 
So that, that there was something going around for a super long time about, um, you know, Su Susan LaBear's taking money from somewhere, from a safe or from something like that. And that's the story. She went into the shop, cleaned out the register, and then was ordered to take it back. So that is another thing that wasn't highlighted before she or when she stood up for Tex Watson at his parole hearings. So that's another reason to look into the case again. Fucking ridiculous. Just crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. Got another one, Danny? Or do you guys have something you want to talk about on this? You guys have some points you want to make on this? No, I was just say there's a really great clip um, of Sharon's mother that we've played before on the show. I'm not sure if you still have it, where she addresses Susan outside of the prison when Tex had one of his parole hearings where um, Susan was basically trying to argue in Tex's defense. And Mama Tate does not take any shit. And it, it's just, it's a really good clip. I used to, If you don't have access to it right now, that's fine. Um, well, I would, I don't want to show it on here cause it's our, our regular show, but she says, Susan LaBerge, you can hear her say something like, like it would be really, it was, she basically, it sounded like she was saying, if you could add your support, it would help a lot. Mm -hmm. And, she, uh, Doris Tate's just like, blow it out your ass. Like, fuck you. And like walks away. And she, uh, when she was asked about, like, what do you want to say to her? She's saying, Call her a dumb shit. It's like any mother would be rolling around in their grave if they thought, right? It's crazy. Mm -hmm. For sure. <clears throat> yeah. Saw that footage earlier today. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that it's just like, that's, ugh, it all looks so bad. It all looks really bad. Which goes along with Steph's question. I there's, think she probably was in on it. There's stuff. It's that's a tough one. I will not get on a hill for that one because I don't know, but it's shady. There is some shady shit. I'll it's, do it. <laughs> yeah. Um The fact that there's so much overwhelming coincidences, I don't want to say evidence because that's a stronger mm -hmm. word, but coincidences yeah. that stuff that you would make that comment, th that question, and we all know exactly where you're coming from with it. It says a lot. Right. It was very spit. Yeah. Very suspicious character to say the least. Yes. For sure. Um, oh, anyway. Now I'm now I'm wondering if Rudy was uh, I mean if if uh, Reed Whitson was Rudy's PI. <laughs> yeah, that one, that one, I knew that was gonna stick with you the whole show. <laughs> that's a wild. That's a that crazy would be one. wild, dude. That would literally. Well, how else was he close to the case? Right. So there's that too. Is it like is she just naive? And no. was she just like no. around in the same in the same areas and just like bad coincidences right there's there's that too right it's but it's just crazy they were a specific target that night for sure and it kind of to go along with this another thing that uh nancy had spoken of recently that was on was on tv even was alice labianca talking about um talking about how manson had had a uh, altercation with Lino LaBianca prior to the murders. Mm. That's his ex-wife saying that. And there were like, there were shading goings on. If you read the second uh, police report, 
These weren't like the, they make them like this all American couple. And it's like, well, no, it's not like, it's not, they didn't deserve to die. They didn't have it coming. It's none of that. It's just or did like, they? no fucking, it's not like that. Yeah. Nobody does. <laughs> Nobody does. Um, the, if you're in, if you're doing bad stuff, I mean, you know, the chances always, it's not that. that you have it coming there's see, this is what I had to get in my head. Cause nobody has, nobody has it coming, but if you flirt on that line, right. It's tough That's what to, I, yes, of course. Yeah. Your chances are more like chances that are greater are. that something will happen. Right. Something bad will happen. There you go. Um, there's hold on a sec here. Russell, uh, some people have it coming. <laughs> no. Dude, if you're in that business, man. I mean, it's it's just, it's like hazards of the... You live by the sword, you die by the sword. Yeah. Wait, slaves? I'm looking at... I don't know, man. It's up for debate. He, they all hung out with some shady people. Oh, I guess he hung out with some because they had some uh, bikers they had thrown under the bus. Right, Linda. She did not have a good relationship with her mom, but that doesn't necessarily mean murder. But Dorgan referred. It doesn't. Yeah. It just adds to the coincidences of everything that's mm -hmm. occurred after. That's yeah. Um, let's see here. Yeah, anything else? Anything else on the Susan LaBerge? No, we've talked stuff. about her quite a bit in other yeah. past episodes. So if people have missed that, go back and check it out. Um, we've also talked about um, you know, everything with her um, with her daughter too. So go back mm -hmm. and check that out. It's not necessarily part of this, so we're not going to get into that here. But if you're interested in the Susan LaBerge angle, we've done shows on that. So definitely check it out if that's a little rabbit hole that you want to go down. Yeah. It'll make you go sideways um, a few times. Here's another one for you guys. Another Here's another look. But we won't go into this. I'll just, because this is here right now and you see it. Mm -hmm. uh, Harold Chu's full of shit because... That's Lino LaBianca's childhood home. That's his parents lived there and they took over from the parents. And there's a whole bunch of info on that. But that is for another show. Um, <laughs> Mark. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, Danny, you got another one? So, we briefly talked about... Um, Last time, Paul, I, I don't have the source with me on hand. I apologize. When on the prosecution side that of the trial, that information was leaked to the press. Through Vincent Bugliosi, that's what he got in trouble for. I in believe, trouble? Well, that's what, I mean, that's what he got. That's why there was on paper a, uh, he was held in contempt. And that's in the that's in the trial transcripts. I believe that was also said in chaos. And I believe they mentioned it in or that guy mentioned it. That I don't that know guy. if it was that it was about he was leaked, the blood family fella. Oh, well, William Zamora. William Zamora. But I don't I think he said that there was they people had been held in contempt of court, like Bugliosi, but I don't know if he had actually said that was why. Because how the fuck would he have known? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just, you know, if you think about that nowadays, that would not fly whatsoever. But yet it it happened back then. And mm -hmm. there wasn't, I know you're saying that Bugs was held in contempt, but to me, the, the punishment does not fit the crime. No, it was, no, it was a smack on the wrist. Exactly. So. Just had that point. He did perjure it himself, that's for sure. Apparently they were going to move, yet yeah, there's a letter talking about all the break-ins and they didn't want the yep. kids to come and stay at the house. They were worried of uh, things, weren't they? Not any substantiated ones. I mean, they did 
probably dumpster dive at one of the things, but no interactions there. Only uh, Alice LaBianca saying that Lino had argued with Charles Manson in the front yard. Hmm. Wow. They bought it in the last, I think somebody had said a little while ago, but the house wasn't empty. Like his mom was there. The house hadn't sat empty or anything like that. They'd go away here and there, but nothing like that. Um, so yeah. Anything else on that? Not on that. Nope. Okay. All right, so Paul, I know you I'm just pulling up our list of notes. There was other points that you had. Yeah. I want to see I want to see Paul being made to listen to the record. <laughs> 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 yes. Yeah, um well there's oh that's a big one though. That'd be so Oh, kind I know of what I was gonna do. I know what I was going to I know do. some of these I'm looking at the list. I'm like, some of them I'm like, oh, that's like a whole show in itself. Yeah, some of them are a big, yeah, a big show unto itself. So what I'm going to do, if you'll just chat for a second, is I'm going to pull up another another something that bears oh. bears looking at. Okay, so while Paul is pulling that up, um, Sam says, where did Alice LaBianca claim that Lino had argued with Manson? It's, there's a, if you look up on YouTube, the, um, there's an interview with her on like TV, some TV channel. Sam Smith with the sources. <laughs> yeah. And if I'm wrong, then I'll find it. <laughs> if I can, I don't know. If you're wrong, Paul will say he's wrong and apologize on our behalf. And I'll just sit here saying I knew all along. Um, uh, Charlie one six. He also perjured himself in front of. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Just double checking if there's anything that we missed on this. Okay, Beckham, anything that you want to add to this? Or are you good? I'm good. <laughs> Clifford, I mean, I can't <laughs> confirm or deny, but yeah, he probably is. Grand okay. jury. Thank you. I want to, well, I mean, I want to talk about the possibility of a shootout still. <laughs> we can't, We nobody knows what happened with those gunshots at four in the morning. I'm just saying, nope. the time is really late. It's four o'clock. How long had the bodies been sitting there, and why was there two shots fired or three shots fired? Nobody knows if it was two or three, really. So, on things that we can prove, you know what's really interesting is that Patricia Cranwinkle was still very fond of Charles Manson in the 80s. Mm -hmm. This was 81. This was in 1981. This is a letter to Newell Emmons from who wrote um, Manson in his own words. Um, this is her sending him a letter with, and those are pictures she drew, I guess. On Would you like me to of, read it, Paul? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Cause it, what we're looking it, at now isn't completely legible. It's, it's no, I know that, but if you, if you have it, go for it. Yeah. Read mm -hmm. it. Okay. So greetings, Newell. Recently I received a letter from Charlie in return, I have requested correspondence with him. The paperwork is presently going through the administration and will eventually be on its way to Vacaville for approval. I thank you and Charlie for the money. As you spare in your yeah, as you spare in your letter, I have remained silent. I would, however, be willing to assist you in any way you wish. A genuine biography of Charlie is a good idea. So many have tried to speak for him, and I personally feel that he is the best spokesperson for himself. I, too, have my own voice, and in those areas which um, relate to me, I would be glad to assist. My relationship with Charlie was multifaceted due to who I was then and what developed through time. The most important piece of that relationship was friendship, and that will endure indefinitely. Again, I extend my thanks for the money. 
please inform me as to any way of which I can be of help. Sincerely, Pat Krenwinkel. So I just thought it was so interesting that uh, that in she the was 80s, still she was, vested. Yeah. And that that fond of him, not sounding like not sounding like, yes, my master, I am. I'm like, but it was like, yeah, we had a multifaceted relationship. I appreciate all this stuff. And it's like goes again. It <laughs> goes kind of against all the stuff she was saying in uh, her parole hearings. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. There was, fuck, there was something else that popped into my head while I was saying, well, you were reading that, that I was going to, uh, that I was going to say, but I forget now. So, fuck. Um, You'll think of it like as we're saying goodbye. You'll be like, oh, wait, here it is. I know. He will. Right. As I, every fucking time. Um, I mean, another fun point is that uh, um, that's not another reason to look at it. It's just interesting is that Linda Ronstant was uh, um, Hinman's neighbor. It would be interesting to have talked to her to figure because she said she remembers seeing them hitchhiking up and down and all this sort of stuff. So who knows if she did? It's interesting. Anyway. Um, yeah. So I don't remember what the hell else I was going to look for. So um, Danny, do you have another one queued up from our list? No. Or are they all like we yeah, talked about them last time too. We talked about Sebring dealing and Voitech dealing. So that was mm -hmm. just my mm -hmm. other. And we'll, we can go more into those later. It was more just like, these are reasons why you should look at, at this. And it was, yeah, I believe it was the Sebring thing was his, uh, his secretary had said that he had been burned for $2,000 mm -hmm. worth of Coke. And he was, he was like, he was, yeah, and that he, he said it would, he would have done anything to get back at whoever did it. Of course, yeah. And you, then you have that, uh, that writer, for the, um, I forget what Hollywood thing, what Hollywood paper or magazine it was, saying that, um, Voitech tried to sell him fairy dust, and he's like, I don't never figured out what fairy dust is. Well, it's MDA. And mm -hmm. that is the stuff that the Canadians were selling, that they were talking about the drug burn. for. So there's just drugs everywhere. It's just drugs. It's mm -hmm. drugs. Drugs killing. Drug killings. When there was that interview with um, Sebring's, I want to call him um, homemaker. And I know that's not the right term. But remember he did that interview and said that the secretary came and cleared? Yeah. They call oh, him the, the butler, butler, but the he's butler. not. Butler. He's, but he's, that's uh, it. But he's not really. He is like a handyman and all this sort of stuff. But anyway, yeah, there's an interview with him. Forget what his name is. And he talks about um, a blonde. Charlene McCaffrey and his blonde. secretary coming to the house after and yep. going upstairs and then leaving. Mm -hmm. And then another girl who he didn't know who was Amos identified. Russell. Thank you, Acapella. Yep. Another person who was who went in there and mm -hmm. it was identified in the in the Manson file by Nicholas Shrek. Yes. Um, there's, so it's just so weird. Amos Russell, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you guys were taught. Okay. Right. The blonde came in first, went upstairs, then Shrek. Right. Some blonde chick. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we played that audio here on a previous episode as well. So that um, goes back a few, few months, I think. Mm hmm But and we don't have too much longer left in this uh this episode, and I'm sure we'll we'll chat about all this stuff again in different orders and here and there. But uh one thing that's really interesting too is if you guys haven't seen it, go look up what Linda Kasabian's lawyer said about everything. It's it was in the um 
Manson's final words. Is that what that was called? Manson's the TV that words. that show that show the show yeah yeah and yeah. so uh, I think so Linda I believe Kasabian's, so. Yeah, Linda Kasabian's lawyer Fleischman. That's right. Was on yeah. there saying uh, we were given a script, and I said to Linda, if you if you read like if you read that, you're gonna walk out of here. He and he said that he thought if Manson had had a half decent lawyer, he would have walked out of the courtroom in that trial. And if not in that trial, then on appeal, mm -hmm. which goes to show more. It was just like, it can't be that everybody was incompetent except for Vincent Bugliosi. <laughs> right? Like it just, yeah. the, the odds of that are just so fucking weird. It just doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of shit going on. Well, and he, the uh, Kasabian's lawyers, you know, when he was talking about that documentary, he said, you know, once she was going to agree to the deal, the truth is as follows. Yeah. The truth is as follows. That's what he says. That's a great line. Mm -hmm. um, that's yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Thank you. Acapella. I knew exactly what was necessary to convict him and whether that was the truth or not, wasn't my business to decide. Yeah. That was Vince's business. I said, Linda, if you testify to that, you're going to walk right. out of that courtroom. That's beautiful. Thank you, Acapella. The deal That's of the century, fucking... dude. Yeah. We did a uh, an episode a while ago of it was her against Homolka. The yes, two people that did. got away with murder, like hardcore. Um, one in the States and one in Canada. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, the deal deals with the devil. Yeah. Uh, she's, and she's been a lifer, lifer criminal. Even oh, she was a criminal that. before she met Manson. Right, She's right. been a criminal after. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Busted this whole for wholesome image stuff. that the jury saw is just bullshit. No, she's a Correct. hard woman. She's a hard fucking, like, hard woman. No, Fleischman is no longer alive. He had changed his name. I was looking for him. I was going to fucking try and get him. And Tom O'Neill knew him, and I was going to get him to ask some questions to him if, if I couldn't. And, uh, yeah, it turns out he passed away. A couple a year or two ago, oh, Fields. Wow, yeah, recently. yeah, Fields. That was his name. Um, but yeah, the truth is as follows. Yeah, that's a big one. And mm -hmm. so there's so many reasons. There are so many reasons to to look back at this and be like, something's something screwy. This. And like it can't be all incompetence on one side of things it can't be like when you find out that the cops were watching the cops or the fbi or the whoever were watching spawn ranch through four murders and then didn't get them till three months after that's some egg on your face that's some fucking egg on your face if you uh if you get caught for that or you can just mm -hmm. be like I don't know. We didn't get it. There was those two cops who were like, "Hey, notice how the blood writing on the wall is similar." <laughs> ah, ah. Right? We don't want to fucking know about that. It's like, yeah, get the fuck out of here. It's totally crazy. Um, Joe Dorgan. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see here. It's amazing that that's true, Capone. It's amazing because Sabian hasn't blown up her heart with meth yet. <laughs> God. Dude, so bad I want to. So bad. Just like, just like shake a fucking thing of meth at her and be like, here, come tell the truth. It's, no, that's, what a fucking asshole. Um, that's so mean. That's so I mean, mean, you're not wrong, but that's so mean. Yeah. That would be one interview. I'd be like, Paul, you're not safe. Don't go. <laughs> Robin asked, how did you meet a Satan slave? That's interesting. Rob. Was it old, Delinda? Um, yeah, that's a long time ago. She's five hours from me. 
Wow, yes, that's, that's not that far, dude. No, I know where I mean, is. relatively, it's not that far, really. You know what I mean? Yeah, it would be easy to find her, considering where I am. Am I going right. to do it? Fuck no. Not even a little. No. <laughs> no way. She would be on the phone real quick calling the 5-0. Yeah, she, would, she didn't to. Uh, she just, like, stuck her tongue out at Ben. Ben for Manson Underworld production, like yes. went and like knocked on her door. Are shit. you serious? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Wow. There's pictures of it of her mm-hmm. like that's crazy out the window. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, his Ben's not from all there. That. Yeah. His wife, rest in peace, um, went up there. <laughs> like, wow, dude, door. that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um yep. See anything? Yeah. So yeah, in the Robin. Next episode, wait, I mean, who you've met? Who a couple of times? And who is surprisingly charming? Are you talking about Kasabian? Are you in? Yeah, Washington? I mean, Robin's from. Dude, Robin grew up in that era. In that era, she was a teenager. You know, like she's kind of like my aunt's age. I know, came up 14, with this state and slave in high school. Well, oh. no, she was in she L.A. at that time. She was, a, you know, a, a higher Rad. up teenager in age teenager. So that's she awesome, supposedly Robin. communicated with us, a couple of them or something. Yeah. Hey, Robin, Maybe can you send me an email? Yeah, in because I want to uh, I want to see if one of them would come and chat. That would be interesting to have one of them on if they're still, I mean, you know, yeah. live and all that stuff. Robin, Robin. Because they got to be pushing like 70s, dude, like early 70s, yeah. you know? Here, I'll hey, put my has email a good in. idea, Paul. Pay What's her that? rent for a month and you'll get a full on exclusive. Yeah. Hey, Tony. I thought about it. I thought about being like, let's do a GoFundMe and we can pay Linda Kasabian and butt whack a crack or meth or something. Oh, one of them is in his but... 80s. Wow. Holy crap. Linda's health is really bad. Yeah, no shit. That's crazy. You met her. I could see her being just like, I could see her being charming it's in the drug game. Right. They can be charming. Um, at Gmail. Yeah, okay. that's for. So if you can, Robin, send me an email or just get a hold of me on Facebook or something. And, and then, uh, nobody caught a blowjob from another prisoner. Hi, oh, um, sorry. So yeah. So send a, an email. Cause I'd like to see if you can hook me up with his Facebook info. I'd like to shoot him a message and be like, Hey, I'm some random Canadian and you are probably have no interest, but why not? Acapella, yeah. Ugh. No shit. No, because she'd probably blow up my meth. No, I'm just okay. I don't have a meth lab. Just be my music. Hey, Sadie. Lady. Hey, Sadie. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Robin. Happy Hanukkah, Sadie. Happy Hanukkah, if there's any other of the uh, Jew Tang clan out there. The rest of us. Me, Posse. Um, yeah. I think it's fucking, yeah. Happy first day of Hanukkah. Yes, for those that practice the happy first day of Hanukkah. James says, get Beckham to give her a good time for an interview. Hey, darling. Hey, darling. <laughs> hey, darling. I hear my voice is smoothing. The smoothing? You know what? On that note, <laughs> this has been a wonderful show. And we thank you guys for dude, round She is the biggest cock. You know what, dude? She's the, the biggest uh-huh. blocker, dude, in history. Do not, Danny. Take yeah, oh yeah, Danny. Do not there. let Danielle be your wing, your wing woman person. Dude. Yeah, no, she's got that cock blocking energy about her, dude. For dude. real, yeah. yes. Innocent me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So that was a buttload of information. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Festivus. <laughs> we'll be going. Uh, we'll be so going through is- more of this stuff, and mm-hmm. we'll be 
doing more of these shows because they're fun and it's interesting to be able to seeing as i i started going back and doing this because of the fucking because of that stupid thing with uh with uh susan atkins the lefty and i still haven't read through those transcripts but we are all on vacation now so i'm gonna give it a go see if that's where i found that information uh we all ain't on vacation <laughs> oh well i am so i'm gonna do that anyway so um, our next show will be on wednesday night yep. and so everybody stay tuned for that Again, keep an eye out because me and Paul will be posting a video here about the exciting raffle stuff that we'll be doing and all the rules and everything in that. When is so, that going to come? Wednesday? Hmm? When is that going to be out? What, the raffle video? Yeah. We're gonna, yeah. That'll be out tomorrow. Oh, wow. That fast. Or huh? later tonight. Mm -hmm. Woo! Wow. That's quick. And then again, for Danny after dark, make sure to check um, and subscribe to my channel because I interviewed Nicholas Shrek and that interview will be on this Thursday um, about his relationship with Richard Ramirez. So check that out. It was a lot of fun and shout out to Nick for being a great friend of the show. Yeah. Thank you all very Wait, much. Are we doing our thing? Are, am I, am I, are we going to still review the show or not or all that stuff? No. Yes, at a later time. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. Right. Thank we'll you. See you guys later. Bye for now. Bye.